tilt to 72 degrees to kill unwanted bacteria. After a couple of hours, the two vats, which hold over 2,500 gallons each, are nearly full, and milk is ready for the starter culture to be added. This converts milk sugar into lactic acid, helping the milk to coagulate. Eventually, one of these vats will make over a ton of cheese. The temperature of the milk is tested before the final ingredient, a vegetarian enzyme called rennet, is added. Time is a critical factor in the process because these ingredients are natural living organisms that continually change the state of the milk. Rather like the way a cooking recipe is followed, the cheesemaker balances the strict time schedule with his years of experience in judging the condition of the product. What we tell when they're free, if you push it down, it comes away from the soil like that, look. It tells me that's ready, so we'll put that on and cut that in. This is the start of the milk transformation into solids and liquids, or curds and whey. The separation is helped by mechanical cutters. These slowly break up the set milk to create the smaller particles. Okay, what we're doing there, we're cutting the curd, we're separating the curd from the whey. As you can see, that's all the big particles. We've got to get them down to about that size there. It takes about 10 minutes. Heat is then applied to scold or cook the curd. Just put some steam on to start the cooking process. That will firm this up. We've got to take this from 33 degrees up to 40 in an hour. It makes it firmer. You feel that now, that's really soft. That'll be firm, I will try. When the cheesemaker judges the product to be ready, it's transferred into long cooling trays. At this point, the whey begins draining off, leaving the curd particles to firm up. Further whey liquids are removed as the curds are stirred and shoveled to encourage distribution. A sample of the whey is taken for every tray and the acidity level checked and recorded to ensure consistency of the product. Once the curd has been left to drain and firm up, the curd is hand-cut with a stainless steel knife. This helps the curd to separate and form into blocks, which can then be turned. This manual process has been carried out the same way every day for over 40 years. The turning process encourages the remaining whey to drain off, with the weight of the curd on top squeezing the liquid out underneath, leaving a solid lump of curd ready for milling. It may look easy, but these curds by now are extremely heavy. One of these weighs as much as two or three bags of sugar, and these men will have turned over one tonne of cheese in this vat alone. By now, the curd is starting to look like the cheese it will become. It has an elastic -y texture and the consistency of chicken breast. This has taken around three to four hours. The curd blocks are then put into the milling machine, which cuts them back into small pieces. Salt is then sprinkled by hand and stirred into the curds, which slows down the fermentation of the curd, enabling it to start its maturation into cheese. Finally, the curds are poured into cloth-lined moulds ready for pressing. Extremely high pressure is exerted on the cheese overnight, squeezing out any final liquids to give the cheese its hard-pressed texture. The next day, the moulds are emptied and the cheese blocks are individually wrapped to seal them so that no air can get in. Wooden slats are strapped onto the cheese. These protect the product from any knocks or squashing. The blocks are date and traceability labelled and then taken to the store where they're kept on pallets and regularly checked. The cheese will mature for at least nine months before it's considered ready for sale. Grading takes place at three months to ascertain the quality of the cheese in terms of colour, texture, smell and taste. What a beautiful ball that is. The cheesemakers are looking for a clean, buttery flavour that's not too acidic in the mouth, and the cheese should have a firm body with an appearance similar to candle wax. Denhay's maturing room has its own living environment with a particular set of organisms which help to define the cheese's characteristic.